this is a Kickstarter sermon series for the year, and this the first passage we are looking at what it means for us to be disciples of Jesus. And over the next couple of weeks, we will dig into what it means for us to be a redeemed people, family, servants, and missionaries. We are, as disciples of Jesus, a redeemed family of servants on mission. And just to help us understand what it means for us to be disciples, uh, we're going to dig into Colossians together. Our focus will be on verses 6 and 7 of chapter 2. Verse 6 and 7 of Colossians are really the, the central imperative of the whole letter. This is the heart of what Paul wanted the Colossians to know. And this is really the heart of what it means for us to be disciples of Jesus. But before we dig into those verses a bit more deeply, we'll just look at some of the repetition that we see in this section and just to get an idea of some of the big themes that Paul brings out in this this letter. A massive focus in Colossians is on the supremacy of Christ. And we see how Paul puts the spotlight on Christ throughout uh, throughout the letter um, and then particularly in this section how we see Jesus Christ as Lord is the one who Paul wants us to to look at and remember and continue in. Paul's desire is that everyone would be fully mature in Christ and so he works strenuously with all the energy that Christ so powerfully works in him. He says he is the one we proclaim. The focus of Paul's work was to proclaim Christ. He wanted Christ to be in the spotlight. And just as they received Christ Jesus as Lord, he wanted them to continue with Christ Jesus as Lord. And in order to do that, he says that he presented the word of God in its fullness. And he says, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. So presenting this word of truth in its fullness has the the end goal of making us mature in Christ. And there is a admonishing, there should be the word everyone in here. It's repeated in the Greek, admonishing everyone, teaching everyone, that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. And he says, to this end, I strenuously contend. And we get this idea um, of the hard work that Paul was putting in. It says, how hard I'm contending for all of you. Up here he speaks about his suffering for them. Now just a quick note on verse 24. He says, what is lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions. Now we need to be very clear that Christ's sufferings are 100% sufficient to secure salvation for his people. So there's nothing lacking in, in Christ's afflictions in the sense of what they achieved to save us. So what he, when he says what is still lacking, I take that to mean the suffering of Paul and the suffering of all future Christians for the sake of the gospel is what Paul means here by what is still lacking with regard to Christ's sufferings for the sake of the body. And Paul starts by saying, now I rejoice. He rejoices in this hard work, this suffering, this strenuously contending for them. And in chapter 2 verse 5, he says, I delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ Jesus is. And then he speaks at the end of them overflowing with thankfulness. So this rejoicing, delight, thankfulness are a big theme in Colossians. If you go and read through just this letter, in chapter 1 in Paul's prayer, we hear about how he's giving thanks for them. In chapter 3, he is giving thanks for all that God is doing in them and through them. Thankfulness is a key aspect of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Paul also speaks in this section of this mystery Now, this is a mystery that has been revealed. It's not a hidden mystery. It was hidden, but it's now disclosed. This mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the secret is out. The mystery is out. It's all about Jesus. And in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
So Paul has said he wants to present the word of God in its fullness, which is all about Christ. Uh, he is proclaiming Christ, admonishing, teaching, so that he may present everyone fully mature in Christ. He's strenuously contending, how hard he's contending. It is, he says, my goal is that you may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that you may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that you may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. So Paul is working hard to put the spotlight and keep the spotlight on Jesus. And then we get to this central imperative. So the imperative itself is continue to live is the central imperative but it's speaking about the whole of, of six and seven it says so just as you received christ jesus lord continue continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness now what it means then for us to be disciples of jesus is that we are those who have received Christ Jesus as Lord. This is a massive, massive statement. If you want to go and look further at what this means, just go and look at uh, chapter 1, verse 21 to 23, where we see that we were enemies of God, alienated from Him, but now Christ has reconciled us. He has made all the difference. You can go and see what Paul says in his in his prayer for the Colossians in chapter two, uh, chapter one from verse nine onwards. And we see the wonders of what we have received as disciples of Jesus because we have received Christ Jesus as Lord. There is nothing better that we could receive. And then Paul says, continue. Now, the reason he is pushing this point is, we can see it hinted at here in verse four, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you. And then if you go and look at chapter 2, verse 8, the very next verse, Paul says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. So they were in danger of being deceived. And Paul doesn't want them to be deceived. So he says, Remember what you've received. Remember the riches of the treasure of wisdom and knowledge that you have received in Christ Jesus and continue in him. So if we are to continue in him, that means that we are not to move away from Christ Jesus as Lord. There's nothing better than him. There's no higher spirituality that we need to attain. We need to stick to the Jesus who we have received. And Paul says, so continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him so rooted is a picture of a tree like in psalm 1 being planted with its roots deeply in jesus and built up in him like the builder in luke 6 who dug down deep and built his foundations on the rock we are to be rooted and built up in him in christ strengthened in the faith as you were taught so we're not moving away from the faith that saved us. We are to stick to the faith that is rooted in Jesus and not to move away from it. So Paul is urging these Colossians as disciples who had received Jesus Christ as Lord to continue in him. And the result of this continuing in him is that we will be overflowing with thankfulness. Now, as I said already, thankfulness is a big theme in this letter to the Colossians. And if you think about what we have received in Christ Jesus as Lord, even in just these two verses, how we were alienated and enemies, but now we've been reconciled. We have hope. Everything has changed for us. We have so much to be thankful for. And as we dig in further, as you discuss this with others or teach it to others, I encourage you to think about what are the things that we can be thankful for as disciples. If we were to start listing them, listing all the things that we have received through Jesus Christ as Lord, that list will go on and on and on 
because in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness. He has secured our eternity. There are so many things for us to give thanks for. And so I encourage you to keep digging into this truth. Dig into the whole letter of Colossians and look at what Paul speaks about, the different things that we can be thankful for. And then as we teach this, let's rejoice in what we've received. We've received Jesus Christ as Lord. Let's continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith that we were taught, which is all about Him, and overflowing with thankfulness for Him. What wonderful truths for us to meditate on and reflect on. And I encourage you to dig in further and may God be greatly glorified as you teach this to others.